All right. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to be talking about working with buyers. Last week, we talked about working with sellers. I'm going to start out by sharing my screen right away so that let me find the one that I'm sharing so that I can introduce myself here. This is the only screen I have that does that. Uh, by the way, this is live. So I do ask that you all mute yourself unless you intend to uh, interact with me. That is the benefit of attending live is that you can interact, you can ask questions. Uh, but otherwise, we don't want to to pick up background conversations and stuff. So please keep it muted if, if you're not intending to interact. Uh, so my name is Eric Lee. If this is your first time joining me, I am the principal broker for Equity Real Estate in Utah. We're the, we're the number one brokerage overseeing pretty much one fifth of all real estate in Utah comes through our, our company. So it's pretty cool. Um, the training program is the full training program is EliteAgentTraining.com. And I've got uh, quite a few agents that go there and subscribe. I wish I could provide more here, but we're an hour a week. And even then, it's tough. As you guys know, you hear the training, you get some good ideas, and then life hits you and you get busy. And um, sometimes we're not doing the homework. So I do really encourage you to do the homework. And if you need access to more information, then you can go to EliteAgentTraining.com and subscribe to the full training program. And then you've got my YouTube channel where I'll post small little videos with um, topics or questions or something that agents sent and posed to me and I can put in there. So with that said, every week we do a little bit of homework. Last week it was talking about listings and we were going to get our listing presentation put together, make sure we could deliver it in 40 minutes or less and get all our stuff organized. This week, we're gonna talk about working with buyers. And I like to start out with a quote. This one I love, just the fact that it's 400 years old and it gets more true every year. But he who stops being better stops being good. This is from Oliver Cromwell. And we are in a world where we're competing with people on the other side of the world, you know? And in real estate, we're competing with other people that are licensed here in the state. They could be in another state and duly licensed here as well. But it is not just competing with people in our own town. We're competing with people all over. And if we're not growing and improving ourselves, then we're falling behind. So some of the resources that you guys have available to you is full buyer's packet. So if you go to Dot Loop, there's a list of everything that you need to have in a in a packet when you're working with a buyer, it gives you a list of all the forms that you're gonna need, okay? Then we've got the buyer's presentation. So if you go to um, Elevate, let me see here. So if you go to Elevate, oh, it says site under construction. Sorry, I didn't, no, oh, maybe we can get in, we'll see. All right, if you go up here to training, and then down to elite agent training, then you'll have access to the buyer's presentation. All right. And that's what we're going to go through today. We'll do a full role play of that. So you'll be able to see that. But it's available there for you. And then, of course, you've got dot loop. If you're in another state and your, your, your broker uses different software, just make sure you're using the updated software that your broker wants you to use. Here in Utah, it's dot loop to be in compliant. And then, of course, you've got a list of the task plans that we'll be going over as well. And those are there also on that Elevate page. Um, and you get those with the training program too. So first of all, when we talk about working with buyers, we've got our fiduciary duty. And I've got this definition here um, that it's the responsibility of an agent toward the principal involving trust, loyalty, confidence, care, and diligence. So very simply, your client's interests come before yours. And of course, you're going to be honest in all dealings. So if your client wants you to be dishonest, we can't do that, right? So we have to be, uh, we have to be legal. We're not just putting our client's interests ahead of everything. We do have to be legal, but in a way that is in our client's best interest is teaching them, hey, we can't do this. You've asked me to do something that's illegal. Here's why it's illegal. Let's do things the right way. Then we're putting our client's interests first, all right? But that's what our fiduciary duty means. Now, the reason why I start this way when I start talking about buyers is we see this violated. I see this violated all the time 
fiduciary duty when it comes to buyers. Okay. Agents are putting their own interests first. This big lawsuit that NAR faced back in Missouri, um, a lot of it comes down to this. In fact, only 12 states out of 50, only 12 require a buyer broker agreement up front. Isn't that insane? To me, that, that blows my mind that 38 states wouldn't even require a buyer broker agreement. And so let's talk about why this is important. And I've had agents argue, I've seen agents online in other states argue saying, I'm never going to use this. I've been doing this 25 years. I'm never going to do a buyer agency agreement. And it absolutely blows my mind as to why. And I've heard the excuses. I've heard people say things from, well, we want to work with them for a while first, right? We need to see if it's a good fit. So is it good for us? Is it good for them? We want to make sure it's a good fit before we move forward. Does anybody use, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. Does anybody use that logic when they're talking about working with sellers? I'm just going to put a sign in the yard. We won't have an agreement. We'll just start working. I'll see if I can show the home a few times. And if they like it, we're good. Does anybody use that argument with sellers? No way. No, it'd be insane, right? It's against the law on multiple fronts, like doing marketing without a representation agreement. And yet as buyers, we're doing it all the time. How many of you have put a buyer in your car and driven around and done showings or had them follow you? Maybe they're not in your car. And you're going around doing showings and you don't have a buyer agency agreement. How many have done that? Raise your hand. Be honest. Yes. Everybody here has done that. Okay. And it's a problem. Right? Now, also, how many of you have worked with a buyer that then went and bought a home without you? You've shown them some homes, but they didn't use you. Like McCall said at the beginning. They decided they'd go to the listing agent directly. Maybe they can save some money. Every one of us have experienced that as well, right? And that's not right either. You're getting used and abused, and it's our responsibility to do better. So let me go back to sharing the screen with you. And sorry, I got to find the right one. There we are. And we're going to talk a little bit about why it comes down to fiduciary duty. So first of all, and I do want some interaction here, so you can unmute yourself to answer these questions. Uh, the first question is, sorry, I've still got people jumping in here. Um, the first question that I have for you is, why do we get clients pre-qualified before we show them homes? You got to know what they can spend before you start looking. Right. Okay. That's, there, there's several reasons. Anybody it else? Help, it helps with their, um, their expectations. So if you show them something way out of their price range and then they love it, and then you have to show them what's in their price range and then they're disappointed. It's, it's better to be able to show them things that they can afford. Mm-hmm. Now, you guys have, I feel like some of you have been through this training before. Do you want to know what the number one answer is? Has anybody not been through this training before? McCall, what's the what's the number one answer, would you guess, when we say, why do you get people pre-qualified? When I ask a room full of agents, why do you get people pre-qualified before we show them homes? Probably just not to, I mean, waste our time, waste their time, and waste the seller's time. That's it. That's it. It's so that we don't waste our time. Okay. Now, what about wasting our time has to do with fiduciary duty, putting our client's interest first? Is it all about us? Is it about wasting our time? Now, McCall, you, you were great. You said wasting our time, wasting their time, wasting the seller's time. We're wasting a lot of people's time. It's not just ours. Okay, but how many of you, if you were working with your mom or your sibling, would require them to get pre-qualified before you took them out and showed them any homes? How many of you would absolutely require it if you're working with somebody very close to you? Yes. Okay, some would. Yeah. There's a, that, usually that's when people bend the rules. 
That's the most common time when people bend the rules is that somebody close to you so you don't get them pre-qualified because you're willing to waste your time for your mom or your sibling or your best friend, right? I mean, they mean a lot to you. You care about them. You're willing to waste your time for them. And this is why I keep coming back to fiduciary duty because it's not about you. You're also wasting their time. And you guys mentioned the right reasons as well. Because when we waste their time, is that putting our fiduciary duty first? No, we're wasting our client's time. When we show them homes that they can't qualify and they fall in love with something that's outside of their price range and then we start taking them shopping $50,000, $100,000 less in their price range, it's hard for them. It's discouraging for them. It's disappointing. They fall in love with a certain level that they're never going to get in their actual price range they qualify for. Have we put our clients' interests first in doing that? We haven't. So when we're working with friends, family, uh, you know, close neighbors, things like that, and we're cutting corners because we're willing to waste our time, we've violated our fiduciary duty. We're harming the people that are closest to us because we're cutting corners. All right. We say if you if you find a house you like and you want to make offer, you can't you can't make offer without the prequal letter. So if you're serious about doing it, then you if you tell them that, oh, they right away they'll oh yeah, let me go get pre qualified. Yeah, that helps, right? So that was the first question is we get them pre-qualified before we show them homes. Why we do that? It is not because we don't want to waste our time. It's because we have a fiduciary duty to the buyer to not waste their time, to not have them fall in love with something that they'll never qualify for, which will taint their entire experience. We want to have them have a good experience. We also want to have an exclusive buyer broker agreement signed before we show them homes. Now, why is this? And hopefully you're you're going down a different train of thought because the logical reason is so that we don't waste our time. But you know I'm going to call that out, right? Because it isn't about you. Why is it in our client's best interest to sign an exclusive buyer broker agreement before we show them homes? Because it's an agreement that um, protects their rights and and our rights. Like Do they even do. know what their rights are. Right. They don't know yet. They're they're still new. They barely. A lot of people are first time home buyers and they don't even know anything about listing, you know, the listing agents. They don't even know the process. They don't know how you get paid. They don't know. They don't know how they're protected. They don't know their rights. If it's a limited agency situation, McCall mentioned earlier, a lot of people are just going directly to the seller, the listing agent, because they think it'll save them money. That puts them without representation or at best a limited agency situation in the states that allow that. And they just have never been educated, right? So it is in their best interest to be educated before we show them homes. Now, years ago, um, I saw the number one reason or the number one complaint against buyer's agents was that clients didn't even realize they had signed an exclusive agreement with them. How is that possible? How do you sign a three-page form and not even realize you've signed it. It happened to me before I got into real estate. It was one of the impetus for me getting into real estate. Uh, Jennifer, maybe they you they sent you they sent you the documents over on Dot Loop. It went or you know some kind of um, some kind of thing like that, like DocuSign, and it just popped up. You know, the, the, the agent said, these are the documents that we have to do to get you um, to to make this offer. Just sign these and get them back to me and let me know when you're done. I do believe that's a modern problem. Um, I don't know if this dates me, but that they didn't have those software programs. I We still had forms in triplicate when I started out. So you would fill it out. You'd tear off the yellow copy and somebody got that. Somebody else got a pink copy and um and then there so was did you not paper. read it? Did you not read what you were signing? How does that happen? That's what I'm asking. Because this is what happened with me is what happens probably nine tenths of the time. Why this problem comes up. Any other guesses? I would say because the agent just put the paperwork in front of them and said sign. And they sign here and sign here. And they did. Okay. But here's, here's the thing. You're right. 
but it's because it's mixed in with a bunch of other paperwork. Right. Because we've been showing them homes for a couple of months. Right. Or maybe we just took them out and showed them a few homes. And then we went under contract and we were giving them a purchase contract. Right. And there may be several addenda. And have any of you had somebody that takes the time to read through all of those? I have. It's pretty rare. Most people just say, sign here, sign here, sign here. And they go along with it. You've got your engineers. You've got your attorneys. They'll read through everything. Okay. Because that's just the way their brains are wired. Uh, I had one guy that was a speed reader. And he actually insisted on reading everything at closing. You know, the 100 pages of documents at closing. He read through all of that just like, bloop, 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 bloop. It was pretty cool to watch. But that is not the norm. Uh, Carly, you got your hand raised. Yeah, I just wanted to say I took the ABR designation course and um, it shouldn't be scary for them. It's really a protection um, for the public uh, against realtors. So I think we have but sometimes backwards where it's a scary document. You feel like they're going to not want to sign it, but I think you need to educate them and say, Hey, this is a protection for you from us. So we um, have an agreement that we'll treat you with care and, um, and we'll through the whole transaction, um, watch all the, the whole process. Sorry, I'm lost, losing my words, but it shouldn't be a scary form to sign. It's really a protection for them from us. Oh, well, it's protection for both sense. There's mutual protection there. Yeah. But yes, it is a protection for them. Thanks, Carly. Um, but yeah, the number one reason agents or people are signing this without even realizing they signed it is because agents have waited until they're presenting an offer. And then they're mixing it in with all the other paperwork and it's just overwhelming. So people are just signing stuff, not even realizing that they've signed an agreement. Of course, we want to get them copies of all the contracts. That's actually required by law. Uh, at this point, we want to get a complete list of what they're looking for in a home. Now, for most agents, this is where they start. You're talking with somebody, a friend mentions to you, hey, we're thinking about buying a home. Oh, really? That's so exciting. I'm a real estate agent. What areas are you looking in? Oh, let me send you some stuff, right? So tell me what it is you're looking for and I'll, and I'll send you some stuff. This is where most agents start. And they've got their order backwards, Okay. Things are out of order for them and it's going to cause them problems. Do we want to send people uh, hot sheets or listings when we don't know what they're qualified for? No, nope, we've already talked about that. Yet agents do that all the time. In fact, some of you guys may have people set up on hot sheets right now that you don't have a pre-qualification letter for them. You're just trying to tempt them with something, with a property that they decide, oh, that looks like a good idea. You know, I, I really like that property. I'm interested. I'm going to give Eric a call because maybe I want to see that. And so we've got hot sheets running for people that we don't have exclusive agreements with. We don't have them pre-qualified and we're not doing them a service when we jump down to what should be fourth on the list. Okay. Having them sign their due diligence forms at the start of the process. That's important too. They should know their rights, right? The for your protection, get a home inspection. Everybody should know they have a right to get an inspection done. Uh, they should know now it's required, at least with Utah forms, to talk about wire fraud. That's a big concern, right? Uh, we also want to be able to prove that we've delivered these things. So if we're using dot loop or the current technology, every form I share, I can prove that I've shared it. So that's important for us. We want to track all the deadlines. We want to understand how our buyers can lose their earnest money so that we're protecting that. We want to stay on top of those things. There is a lot of value that we have, and we'll be with them through the entire process, attending closing, and we're going to keep a copy of the transaction for a minimum of three years, which is at least the Utah requirement. Now, before I go on to this next one, I'm going to jump over. Well, let me go over this script first really quickly. When, when you run into somebody, and or if they call off of a sign, right? Uh, and we're calling them back. Hey, I noticed you called on one of the homes I have for sale in this neighborhood. What further information can I get for you? Quick question. Do you have an agent already helping you in the purchase of a home? Is it important that we ask that question? Yeah. Yes. Um, one of the other things that I follow up is I've, I've started saying, because some of them will say no, 
do you have an agent help already helping you? Some will say yes, and I'll say, have you signed an agreement with them? And most at that point will say no. So if they're working with somebody, but they haven't signed an agreement, can I continue talking with them and try to get them to sign one? Is there anything unethical about that? Hmm. No. This steps on toes. What's uh, that? Sorry. Are you just trying not to step on people's, you know, you don't want to create a bad relationship with the other agent, but technically you could, right? Okay. Um, I'll give you my opinion and you can think I'm an asshole. You're fine. I'm fine with that. Um, if another agent has worked with somebody and hasn't signed a form, has that other agent fulfilled their fiduciary duty? Are they looking out for the best interests of that person? They're not. They're not. Do I care about stepping on their toes? You do not. <laughs> I do not. And I've had agents call me up saying, hey, I've been working with this person for five months and they just signed an agreement with you. I don't think that's right. I think you should give me a referral fee. And I've said, I do not pay referral fees to agents that do not comply with the law and do not put their client's interests first. If you've been out showing this person homes for five months, you have done them a disservice. You do not deserve to get compensated for that. I will not pay you. Please don't contact the client again. We have an exclusive agency agreement in place. Am I an asshole for that? There's some agents that would say that. And I'll take their business all day long, every day, and I'll provide a better service to my clients. My clients will be better served. They'll be happier. I'll be happier. And that agent will go out of business, which is where they should be. Is that harsh? Welcome to life. Okay. This is a harsh world. If you don't get better, the person who stops being better isn't any good at all. Right. Going back to my Oliver Cromwell comment there. So we need to do better. So. Do you have an agent that's already helping you in the purchase of a home? Yes. Oh, have you signed an, ex uh, an exclusive agreement with them? Um, nope, haven't signed anything. Okay, great. Well, I would love to show this home to you. And, um, and by the way, I specialize in working with buyers. You know, I can show you the home and I can show you for 15, you know, in 15 minutes, I can show you... Uh, my great program that I have for buyers. So I've got this little script here. I'd love to show you my exclusive program for buyers. It takes about 15 to 30 minutes, depending on the questions you have. It'll be great information every buyer needs to know. And in exchange for your time, I'll leave you with coupons for local businesses that will be worth several thousand dollars, everything from lending to flooring, all the stuff that a buyer needs. Is there any time today or tomorrow that I can meet with you and we could go over this? Now, if you don't know what the thousand dollars of coupons are, then that's a different training. It's called the power team training. And you can join me for that. We'll, we'll be covering that in a few weeks. But what I want to do is I want to be able to sit down with them in person and communicate my value. So how much value do I have driving people around showing homes? Lots of value? No, I'm an Uber driver. Right? That's it. I'm an Uber driver. That's worth 50 bucks. Have you ever had somebody that you've shown homes a bunch and they call you and say, hey, you know what? We found a home that uh, there's no agent or it's a for sale by owner or whatever. And so can we just pay you for your time? We'll, we'll send you 200 bucks. I've had that happen to me. That's what they value an Uber driver. Not thousands to tens of thousands of dollars because I haven't communicated my value. So what I wanna do now is I want to show you how to communicate your real value. Now, this is the home buying packet that I have prepared for you in the Elevate website. I've just taken it and put it into a PowerPoint, all right? Now, what you can do is you can do the same thing. You could copy and paste into a PowerPoint. If you've got an iPad, you can get, have this saved on your iPad. This doesn't change according to the client. You know, with listings, we're doing a CMA and, you know, there's going to be some variations in our listing presentation. With a buyer's packet, I just have it saved and it's real easy to go through. So we're going to step into role play mode. It's 1030 right now. See how long this takes to go through this. And you guys get to pretend to be the client. Okay. And I actually want you to pretend that you have been working with another agent. 
You've, in fact, you may have had a couple of other agents show you homes, but you haven't signed any exclusive agreement with them. And so, uh, anyways, let's step into role play mode. So, thank you guys so much for meeting with me. I'm really uh, happy to be able to sit down with you and answer some of your questions about working, about buying a home. Um, I've been doing this for a long time, and I've put together this home buying packet to cover some of the basics about what it is that I do and how I can help you in this process. First of all, buying a home today, uh, I, I think we all kind of miss those days where they could do a spit and a handshake. Since COVID, it's just a handshake. Nobody wants to spit. But um, but we miss those days when you could just trust people, right? And in fact, in real estate, there's a law, at least in Utah, it's called the statute of frauds, that says that all agreements have to be in writing. Now, this is one of the key values that I provide as a real estate agent is making sure that things are done correctly, that the forms are done correctly. Because when you think about it, if we're taking several hundred thousand dollars, the biggest financial uh, decision that most people ever make, and we couple that with the emotions of this is where I'm raising my family. This is where you know the roof over their head. This is where my kids are going to grow up. It needs to be safe. If we take the emotions attached with that and the, the dollar value and we screw up the paperwork, it is the perfect recipe for a very bad lawsuit. And so one of my jobs is to make sure that that paperwork is done correctly. All right. And for that, I've put in a lot of time into studying my forms and knowing the tools that can help you go through this process smoothly. So let's go over some of the reasons why we purchase a home. Now I put this in here primarily for first time home buyers because it is a scary process, but it's beneficial to everybody. In a poll done, the number one reason to purchase a home is freedom. People love the freedom. It's mine, I can do with it what I want. I don't have to ask a landlord if I can paint. I can paint, I can do updates, I can, I can change things around. And even better, I get an actual payback on those improvements. There's a different lifestyle also when you're in a neighborhood of owners versus renters. People tend to look out for each other. They're caring for each other. They're, they're more considerate of each other. You're building up equity. Homes appreciate over time. We have some dips and stuff, but if you look at the graph over time, homes have always appreciated in value, even with inflation the way that it is, which is, you know, it's highest, it's higher now than it has been in a long time. Owning a home helps keep up with that. In fact, it's such a good vehicle that a lot of people will use it for retirement. They're not just buying their own home. They're buying multiple homes. There's income tax benefits that come along with that. And, and as I mentioned, a lot of people are getting into investment properties as well. So I, I commend you on making the decision to buy a home. And it's not always easy. Sometimes we get into bidding wars. We're competing with somebody else. Sometimes issues come up with inspections or appraisals, and, and it's not easy to work through. But I want you to remember these things. When it feels hard to you, I want you to remember all of these reasons of why it's good. And we still want to make one of the best decisions you'll ever make here, and I help you do that. Now, one of the first things I want you to understand is how agency works. So there's the listing agent. And obviously the listing agent is looking out for the seller's best interest. They're trying to negotiate the highest price and have language in the contract that benefits the seller. Now, my job is I'm your agent. So I am negotiating for you, trying to get you the best price, trying to have the contract language in your favor, making sure that the deadlines in the contract are beneficial to you and considerate of you and your needs. And then in Utah, it's also legal for them to be the same person. Now, that's called a limited agent. Now, they're limited because they can't provide the same level of service that they could individually. Like, for example, if you approached a seller directly and said, hey, I don't have an agent, and that listing agent said, great, I can help you out. If you then ask that agent, what do you think is a fair price I should offer on this home? If that agent says anything less than full asking price, he's violated his fiduciary duty to that seller, right? Unless that seller told him, hey, go out and tell people you can offer less than what we're actually asking, then he's violated his fiduciary duty. 
Now, you don't want to work with an agent that doesn't understand fiduciary duty in the first place. So if they do violate it, that's a red flag, right? And if they do understand fiduciary duty, do you want to work with the agent that doesn't tell you to offer anything less, that doesn't help you negotiate in your favor? So you can do it. It is legal, but at least in Utah it is, but it may not be in your best interest. So if it is in your best interest to have an agent, let's talk about what it costs you. How does it work? So first of all, when somebody wants to sell their home, they contact a listing agent and that listing agent sits down with them way before any buyers are in the picture, right? Sits down with them and says, okay, I'm going to help you sell your home and I'm going to charge you this commission amount. And it's negotiable. It could be 4%, 6%, whatever, right? And then that listing agent goes and he says, you know what? I know a couple hundred people personally, but here in Utah, there's 20 some thousand agents. And so if I can reach out to those 20,000 agents and they all know a few hundred people, I can reach a lot of people here. So that listing agent says, hey guys, I'm getting paid 5% commission as an example. I'm willing to give two and a half percent to anybody that brings a buyer to me. Okay, so the buyer's agents typically get paid by the listing agent. Now that listing agent, he could offer a dollar. He could offer nothing, right? In which case we go in and we say, hey, I'm going to be helping this person. Here's the value that I'm bringing to you. I'm going to be helping this buyer make sure they're pre-qualified because you don't want to accept an offer from somebody that's not qualified. I'm going to help them negotiate their way through issues that come up with inspection, right? Because if they don't have an agent, if this buyer doesn't have an agent and they get an inspection done, that derails almost every time with an unrepresented buyer. They don't know how to work their way through those things. If there's an appraisal issue, it's only the buyer's agent that helps with those types of things. So whether or not this deal actually gets across the finish line is going to be because I'm there helping. So that's why the listing agent wants to pay the buyer's agent is because we actually get the deals done. There's a lot of value that comes in. So with no buyer's agent, the buyer gets little to no representation and the listing agent, they get to keep that full commission, right? They don't have to share it. So a lot of people mistakenly think, hey, I'm going to approach the seller myself and then I'm going to save money. This contract up here predates you thinking that. This contract says this agent's going to make 5%. They're able to share that with a buyer's agent. But if there's no buyer's agent, they get to take that full 5%. That's theirs. So a lot of people don't understand this concept up front. So let's talk about, okay, this is how a buyer's agent gets paid. What exactly do they do for you, though? First of all, connecting you with the right people is worth thousands of dollars right? You could, you could go through the phone book and pick out a lender. My lender will beat them 99 times out of 100 because my lender gets deals from me every single month. And they know that most of the time they're going to get, you know, let's say that some people will call up their dad and say, hey, dad, who do you go to for a loan? Well, the last time dad went to that guy for a loan was four or five years ago. And dad will say, I've used this guy to buy five homes over my life. That's five homes spread out over 70 years. My lender gets a deal from me every month, right? So my lender doesn't mess with my business. He takes good care of my clients. Now, I don't get any kickbacks from him. That would be illegal. I just want to make sure that you're connected with people that are going to do a good job. They're going to be on top of it. They're going to communicate with us. They're going to be competitive with their pricing and they're going to meet the deadlines that we give them. That can save you thousands of dollars. Same thing with an inspector. In fact, in Utah, to be, to be a home inspector, I just go down and pay for a business license. There's no special training. There's no special equipment. So knowing a good inspector that actually goes through, that, that, that gets in the crawl spaces, that gets on the roof, that has the tools, the 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 uh, infrared tools to see where there might be pipes leaking in the walls, that kind of stuff that can save you thousands to tens of thousands of dollars. And we've just named two different people here that I can save you 
thousands and thousands of dollars with. So connecting with the right people. Next, this is important, providing immediate access to new listings. I've got the tools that alerts us the minute a new listing hits the market that might be of interest to you. Now, obviously that's important because if, um, if we're waiting till the weekend, be, you know, because we're busy during the week. And so on the weekend, we can do some searching and a home came up on the market Monday. There's a lot of other people that may have seen it. If it was a great property, it may be gone before we even get a chance to see it. So getting immediate access to new listings is important. Now, you're not limited in any way by working with me. If we see a home on the internet, a for sale by owner, open houses, builders, whatever, I can show you all of them. And again, if it's a for sale by owner, I'm going to communicate to them. Hey, you're going to save some money by representing yourself but I'm still, we're still going to ask you to pay this buyer agent commission here because I'm going to be doing these things. I'm going to be making sure the paperwork is done correctly. I'm going to help this client negotiate their way through inspections, through appraisal issues. Basically, because I'm here, this deal is actually going to get across the finish line. It's going to be worth it to you. And you're still going to experience some savings if you don't have an agent, right? So I will negotiate that commission with a for sale by owner as well. So you're not limited in any way by having me in the picture. One of the other things that I can do for you is I can provide a comprehensive market evaluation on properties before an offer is made. Now, obviously we don't wanna go out and spend $500 on an appraisal, every home that we're interested in before we make an offer. But I can give you a pretty rough idea of value before the offer is made uh, because we have access to many of the same tools that appraisers have. So that's worth money right there. And then I'm a cer certified negotiation expert, so I, I can help you in the contract negotiations. Just knowing the language of the contract, knowing the timelines in there, okay? Knowing how to structure it so that it's in your favor. There's a lot of benefit there for you as well. And of course, I'm there with you through the entire process, right up through attending closing, to make sure that when, that when we get to closing, I review those final numbers, which are overwhelming for a lot of people. And I make sure that they match up with everything that we've negotiated for, right? So this is what I do for you and um, help you with making an offer. So first of all, with making an offer, you got to understand, as I mentioned earlier, it does have to be in writing. And so legally binding contract. Now, some people don't even know where to get the contract. They get online and they Google purchase contracts and they end up with something from California that isn't relevant here in Utah. So I make sure that we're using the correct forms, the most current forms and the forms that are legally enforceable here in the state. So I'll be with you every step of the process there. And this is very important. Now, earnest money, typically $1,000 to $5,000 is typical. And we hold this with a third party company, usually the title company, and it's protected for you through your due diligence period. So we have time to do inspections. We have time to make sure this is everything that you want. We have time to let mom and dad come and walk through it or friends or whoever you want. We can make sure that this is what you want. And if, for example, we do our inspections and the home is filled with termites, well, then we can get our earnest money back without any penalty whatsoever, as long as we're doing it by the deadlines in the contract, which is, again, something that I've helped you write. So you're protected there. So it's really nice knowing that, hey, if we find something we love, we can move on it right now and we're protected, right? We have plenty of time to do whatever inspections we want to do and uh, without risking losing money. Now, I've mentioned the inspector. I can connect you with a good inspector and they do everything. They test every outlet. They test every appliance. They test the windows. They get on the roof if there's not snow up there. They, uh, they get in the crawl spaces. They check everything out so we can have the most comprehensive knowledge about that home. And if we find issues that are major issues, then we can negotiate our way past those. Or if we need to, if it's too much, then we can cancel the contract. And again, as long as we're doing it by the deadlines that we've negotiated, then we can get all of your earnest money back and you're not at risk. Another thing that I can typically do is I can negotiate a home warranty and it covers some of the major systems in the home for the first year. That's the heating, plumbing, electric cooling. You don't wanna go under contract on a home, buy a home and all of a sudden have the furnace go out and be faced with a $10,000 plus repair that you didn't anticipate, right? So I can help protect you from those types of things as well. Now, behind the scenes, there's a lot of people working. We've mentioned the title company. Not only are they holding 
the earnest money for us, but they're actually researching title. They're reaching the hit. They're researching the history of ownership of this property so that when you take ownership, no other claims can come back on you that could threaten your ownership. Okay. And title insurance is actually a requirement in the purchase contract. And so these guys are making sure that they're doing that research so they can issue that insurance. Right. And then there's the home inspection. We've talked about them. There's the lender and the appraiser. So the lender is going to be working on the loan. They're going to be gathering all of your personal information, making sure that you qualify for the loan. The appraiser will then go out there and they'll appraise the home for the bank making sure that the bank's interest is protected. They're actually hired by the lender to make sure that the bank's interest is protected. One of my jobs is to coordinate daily or weekly with each of these people to make sure that they're getting their job done on time. That is very important because we have deadlines to meet for all of these things. So making sure that they're getting the job done well and getting it done on time is very important. Now I wanna go over the loan process with you really quickly. Um, if we haven't gotten pre-qualified yet, and, and I'm going to give you the name of a good lender that we can talk to, but the process is very simple. First of all, it's the pre-qualification, the interview. Okay. You can do this online. Some it's over the phone. Some people like to go and meet somebody personally. It's up to you. But at this stage of the game, you're telling them everything, right? If you've got financial skeletons in your closet, tell them now, hey, we had a bankruptcy or a foreclosure or we're struggling with these things, whatever. Tell now because they do discover these things along the way. If we know it up front, then we can have time to get those things fixed. And maybe we put uh, purchasing a home on hold for six months until we get some of those things fixed. But we can get them fixed. We need to know about them. So that's the first thing they're going to do is, is get you pre-qualified. They're going to check your credit. I'm going to make sure what we can qualify for based on the income that you're having. Okay. Uh, they're going to get some documentation from you. So they're going to talk to your employer, make sure that you have a job, you know, that your income is what you said it was, that kind of stuff. And at this point, this process kind of goes on hold. All right. Then we go out shopping. We know now what you can qualify for. We know what the payments would be. So if we're looking at a home, we're not just seeing the purchase price of a home you know the actual payments. You know, hey, I can be comfortable with this. You might qualify more for more than the payments you would like to make. So that says, hey, I could qualify for 900,000, but I'm not comfortable with paying payments over anything over 750. Great, let's look for homes in the 750 range then, right? Let's make sure that you feel good about moving forward with whatever you do. So we go out shopping. We find a home, we get it under contract, then this kicks into high gear, right? We, I submit all of that information to the lender. I give them a copy of the contract. I give the title company a copy of the contract. They start going to work. We update the documentation, making sure you still have a job, that that hasn't changed. You haven't gotten any new loans, so don't go out shopping for cars in this process because that can derail things, right? We get the loan approved, right? That typically takes two to three weeks, four weeks on the outside, and then they draw documents for us. We have three days to review those things, to make sure that all those numbers are accurate. And again, I'm doing that for you. I'm going to go through that, making sure that those numbers are accurate and reflect everything that we've negotiated. And by the way, it's about 75% of the time I will catch mistakes. It's one of the reasons this is part of my job is I know the contracts better than a lot of the people preparing it. So we make sure everything's good there. And then we go to closing. Now, it's important that after that is funding and recording, because a lot of people I've heard that, that didn't have an agent or an agent that didn't communicate well, they showed up at closing with their U-Haul ready to go. Hey, we're closing on the home. It's ours now, right? It's not actually. Okay, we're signing the paperwork now, but that paperwork typically has to be overnighted to the lender who approves it, and then they'll fund and record the next business day. So if we closed on a Friday and you were planning on moving in that weekend and your friends and family all came in to move in that weekend, you don't actually get the home till Monday. So even simple little details like that, that I can help you with. And instead we close on a Wednesday because I know this. So that by the time Friday rolls around, we're funded and recorded. Your life is so much easier, right? So even the small details make a big difference. So here's the bottom line. I'm going to save you thousands of dollars, sometimes tens of thousands of dollars in connecting you with the right people. I've got a full-time team dedicated to helping you find the right home. 
Uh, I'm a certified negotiation expert, so I know the paperwork, I know the contracts, and I'll help you solve the problems that come up as we go through there. I'll be with you through the entire process and make sure that we're there at closing. So with that said, how would you guys feel about me being your agent? I'd hire you. Okay. So let's say that you've had other agents out showing you homes. Do you know what most people say? And I've heard this so many times, I can't count it. Well, you know, they'll tell me John Smith has showed them homes. And they'll look at each other and they'll say, John Smith never took this kind of time with us. Guys, I just took 20 minutes. How much time did John Smith? How much is your average showing appointments? <clears throat> Between driving to the home, showing the home, driving back, you're a minimum of an hour for one home. I just took 20 minutes. I've had times where John Smith has been working with them for six months. And they sit there in front of me and they say to each other, John Smith never took this kind of time with us. What do people value? Do they value an Uber driver? They do not. Have I presented my value here well? Are you, do you feel more confident moving forward and buying a home with me than just a guy that's driving you around showing you things? You feel like you got somebody looking out for you? You feel like you're going to be protected? 99% of the time, I walk out of this with a signed agreement. The 1% is very rare, and it's somebody that says, you know what, I'm working with five different agents. Whoever finds me a home first, they get my business. And I just say, sorry, I don't, do, I don't work that way. And they'll say, what do you mean? Everybody else is willing to. I'm not everybody. I'm the top 5%. I'm the top 1% of realtors. I don't work the way everybody else does. Everybody else is going to go out of business in a few years. Not me. I've been around for a long time. Okay. So if you want a great agent, here I am. If you want to get sloppy seconds from a bunch of bad agents, keep doing what you're doing. Right? Now, do you do that same buyer presentation with mom when you're working with your mom? Do, do you really need to do that to convince mom that you're that she's going to use you? No. So do you bother doing it? Tammy, you were shaking your head. You don't need to do this for your mom to sign an agreement with you. Should you still do it? The answer is yes. Why? Because mom needs to see you in action. Because mom needs to be your ambassador. She needs to say, hey, don't hire Tammy. because She needs to be thinking, don't hire my daughter because she's my daughter. Hire my daughter because she just blew my socks away. I had no idea my daughter was this good at this business. I didn't know most of this stuff. And I'm her mom. I've been around a lot longer on this earth than she has. But I didn't know half of this stuff that she said. Tammy blew me away. That's what you want. So you do this to your friends. You do this to your family. You do this to your loved ones. And you say, before we ever go out and see anything, I want you to know what I do for you so that you know how I protect you through this process. Okay? Are we all good with that? Yes. Thank you. All right. Yes. So... Is there anybody that wouldn't hire me? Just curious. You're not going to offend me. Like I said, I don't win all the business that I go out on. But if I did that buyer presentation, is there anybody on here personally? If you were, weren't an agent, you're just a member of the public. Is there anybody on here that would not hire me? Leah, would you hire me? Yeah? Okay. Again, it doesn't offend me. I, I've done these and I've had people say, well, I don't know if I would or not. I might shop around a little bit more. It's pretty rare though. Okay, so you're not going to win everything. But guys, it is important that you take this time because people say over and over, nobody else took this kind of time with us. And then by the way, I'll sign the exclusive buyer broker agreement with them and I'll leave and I'll call up John Smith and I'll say, hey, John, I just wanted to make sure I just met with Jim and Nancy and uh, 
they said that they had that you had been showing them homes for some time, but they just signed an exclusive exclusive buyer broker agreement with me. They said that that uh, they had not signed one with you. I wanted to make sure that that was the case because I know sometimes people forget. Have they not signed one with you? And and John's like, what? I've been working with them forever. Did they say why they didn't want to? Why they didn't want to use me? I'm like, no, they didn't say anything. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just calling to make sure that you didn't have a conflicting agreement with them. And John will say, I, I didn't. Okay, well, I just want to let you know I'm working with them now. So uh, thank you, and I hope you have a good day. Right? So I'm going to verify, because sometimes people, they don't remember that they signed something. If they did sign something... Then I call my clients and say, hey, John Smith said he did have a contract with you. I've asked him for a copy of it. And if it is valid, then his predates mine and I'll have to step back. I want, I'm not going to be able to help you while his is in force, right? Okay. But that's the bottom line, guys. We provide a lot of value and it is not as an Uber driver. So make sure you're communicating that value. Any comments? Karen, you had a comment? I, I did have a question. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I just wondered if you had one signed and then it was a long time ago, do you have to keep doing it? Yes. You can. So if you sign a six month agreement and that six months so has to about every six months. Okay. So you can set the, the length of time for the agreement. So if it's somebody who says, you know what, I'm not in a real okay. rush. I do want to buy a home in the next year. I say, great. Let's put a, a one year agreement together. Okay. okay. Most people I'll do six months and I'll let them know okay. if we don't find something in six months, there's no rush. We'll just sign an addendum to this extending it. So yes, you would need to sign okay. an addendum extending it if uh, you hadn't found them or closed on anything within the term of your agreement. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. All right, you guys, here's your homework. You know where your resources are. You need to put together a buyer presentation. If you're currently working with people that you've been driving around or you have hot sheets set up for that you don't have a buyer agency agreement with, call them up and say, hey, you know what? I just learned something and I realized I probably haven't communicated very well all the stuff I actually do for you. And knowing this stuff will really actually take a lot of the fear out of the process for you. So can we set a time in the next couple of days where I can come and sit down for 15 or 20 minutes and just lay out the whole process for you? It, it's things that I've been doing, but I haven't. I, I just learned in this training that I can do a better job of communicating what I'm doing to my clients so that they know and it kind of sets their mind at ease. Could we meet in the next couple of days? So if you're if you're currently working with buyers, if you're showing homes, if you've got hot sheets going out with people that you don't have an exclusive buyer agreement with, now is the time to call them and say, hey, I just learned that I can be a better communicator. I want to make sure you understand the full value that I'm bringing and go sit down with them and have this, this uh, presentation. Again, we did that in 20 minutes, guys. It doesn't take a long time to go through. So get it prepared. Go through it a couple of times. Make sure that you can deliver it in 30 minutes or less. That is your homework this week. Thanks, you guys, for joining me.